So how much money do I need to have to buy my first house? Can I get in with no down payment? Do I need to have cash ready? And how much do I need to save? Are those the questions that you're asking? Hey, Laura Gallen here with Mountain Prairie Living Empowered by ERA Shields. And in today's video, I'm gonna answer the question, how much money do I have to have to buy my first property? What are the costs involved and what kinds of programs are out there to help me get into my first house? So let's get to it. So there's a variety of ways to get into your first house and it could be a condominium or a townhouse or it can be a single family residence depending on your location and your affordability, there are a variety of ways to get in. In some areas, they have down payment assistance programs. In our area of Colorado, there is the CHAFA um, down payment assistance program, and we also have a local El Paso County program called Turnkey. And you can apply for those and go through their first time home buyer educational um, courses that they have that are required to uh, to be approved for their down payment assistance plan and they offer down payment assistance. Now you'll still need a little bit more money. So let's talk about the variety of things that will cost money as you go through the home buying purchase. So whether it be the chaffa, the turnkey or your own down payment, the minimum down payment that most people will need is three to three and a half percent. And that would be a, a FHA type of loan, which also is what the first time home buyer down payment assistance plans help you with. For three and a half percent of the purchase price would be your down payment amount. So that'd be the first cost that you would have to consider and save for. So you will need what's called earnest money. You're gonna have to have money available. And the earnest money is about typically about 1% of the purchase price. In some of the higher priced homes, it could be even more, but you do have to have that cash on hand. And if you're wondering what earnest money is and how it's different from down payment or how it relates to down payment, then check out my video on earnest money, which I'll link below in the description box. The next cost that you're going to incur is the inspection fee. And we highly recommend that you do an inspection. So inspection fees can run anywhere from about 550 to about 650 on average. And that's paying for an inspector to come out and look at the mechanicals of the home, look at the roof, look at the structure, check out all of the plumbing and electrical of the, of the home and give you a good idea as to what you're buying. And we highly recommend that you, you do that. And that cost is something that you'd also have to have money for because they won't release the inspection report until you pay them in full. Now, if you're buying a property out on the prairie or up in the mountains, not necessarily right in the city, you might have what's called well inspection cost if the property is on a well and you wanna buy a property on a well. You will have to have it inspected. That will vary depending on your county, city, or area that you're located in. But a typical well inspection is about $550 or so. And you will need that money up front because you wanna make sure that there's enough water going to that house. And it's gonna check the flow rate and uh, you're gonna make sure that the permit is valid, that the actual water coming to the house is in good condition. So well permit and well, well inspection is a really important thing and it's an additional cost if you're buying a house that has a well. Now appraisal costs, they can be moved into the loan. In other words, you're gonna pay for it with some of the, the lender fees at closing. So that would be part of your closing costs. But sometimes you're asked to pay it up front. And a typical appraisal in our current market is about $750. It could vary by market, it could vary by location. But do you need that money up front? You might have to, but typically it is lumped into the closing cost at the very end. So it will come into play before you close that transaction. So what are closing costs? I did a whole video on closing costs, so I will also link that below in the description box so you can check that out. But typically closing costs, depending on the price point of the home, in your typical first time home buyer home is gonna be about one and a half to 2%. And what's included in that? That's your full year insurance policy. It's escrows that are taken out for the loan 
who will be collecting that insurance cost every month and in collecting the tax amount every month so that when they come due, they will be able to pay them in full. It's the lender fee, the processing fee, the title report fee. It's a variety of fees that happen at the closing table that you will be having to pay to close that transaction. Now, depending on the type of loan you have, that may be coming out of your pocket. If you are a VA approved buyer, then you're using the VA loan and a lot of that will be paid by the VA fee and at the closing for you. And in a different market, we're currently in a seller's market, in a buyer's market, sometimes you can ask for a concession of money from the seller to pay part of the closing costs. So if you're finding value in this video, then subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. Now in today's seller's market, sometimes you might need a appraisal gap. And if you'd like to know more about what, what an appraisal gap is, I did a whole video on that. So I'll link that also below in the description box. But appraisal gap is the difference between what a home is appraised for and what you're offering. And sometimes you'll end up having to pay that when you're making an offer. And sometimes the uh, appraisal actually comes in at value and it might not have to be paid. But check out my video on appraisal gap. But that's another area where you need to have some cash in the bank and ready in case that appraisal does not come in at the value that you made your offer at. So that gives you a synopsis, a very brief one of what type of money you will need to begin and to close a real estate transaction for the first time. So check out the videos and I'll, I'll link the one to earnest money right after this so you should see it at the end. But if you want to know anything more then feel free to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.